I'm someone that thinks Tiger's just, he's done as a public figure. I don't think he's a guy that handles adversity well. This is, he hasn't won a major since the Thanksgiving 2009 incident. He hasn't really been the same player since then. I know he won a player of the year in between there, but I just think he's done as a public figure. I don't think we'll see him play golf again. Well, it depends what pub, public figure means. I mean, he may be, end up being the greatest analyst, golf analyst, you know, of all times. If he wants to articulate how he was thinking and what he was thinking or what he thinks somebody, you know, is His thinking at a moment. personality fits that? No, it doesn't. It okay. doesn't. But you never know. Nick Faldo reinvented yeah, no himself. Faldo was going to be a great analyst. No, but uh, I feel for Tiger for other reasons. I mean, I think that, you know, he might have a problem with these painkillers. He's got... <laughs> every reason to have a problem. He's had a lot of pain. He's had a lot of surgeries and all that. And I'm more worried that there's a bigger problem with Tiger Woods and less concerned about his golf. Um, you know, this opiate epidemic is rampant in the United States. There's no telling how many people die uh, every day as a result. And I just hope he's not one of those guys. I hope he doesn't have an addiction problem. I hope he's not addicted. I hope he didn't, you know, wake up at 2.45 in the morning after taking his Ambien or whatever and just slept walk into his car and drove down the street and, you know, pulled over asleep. I don't know what the situation is. They're very secretive. But Tiger needs somebody around him that can intervene if there is a problem. Uh, you know what, beyond the drug concerns and, and, the, um, and, and him being addicted to something, as far as him just getting back on the court, I mean, getting back on the course, I, uh, I think he will. I, I don't think he's done. I, I, think part of the re I think part of that, Tiger was raised to believe that he could do all these things on his own. I think he was raised to believe that he could handle everything, he could conquer everything, that he was going to be better. And when you're that way, that, that's, that's still in his brain, that's still in his mind. I think that's part of the reason why he's gotten on the courses and his body wasn't there. Because in his mind, he still sees himself doing all of those great things he did once before, even though his body yeah, is the, failing him. The mind and the body, though. And no, that, that's yeah. what I'm saying. His body has failed. He's, he's like that athlete that has lost a step, but you still think you can do it. Well, and the thing is, in golf, you can still do it. Sure. Because at age 40, I mean, if he's pain-free and he doesn't have a problem, then I would never rule him out. I agree with you. I would never rule Tiger out. I've seen him well, in his prime. But both of you make an interesting point in combination. He's saying he needs to ask for help. You're saying his, will. his athletic success is going to stop him from asking for help. That's a problem when here's, you have... Here's why I'm concerned, is I've been around lots of different sports, and... You, you have as well, Eric. And everybody that's dealt with that number of surgeries, it's the odds are that they're going to be connected to painkillers at some in some form, whether it's an addiction or a reliance moving forward. I would be surprised if he wasn't reliant on painkillers with this amount of surgeries, in particular on your back. That's what I know to be the athletic experience. I had problems with Vicodin because that's what it was. That's what you did to get back on the field, right? I mean, I don't anymore. Uh, how many players and teammates have you seen that, that were reliant, at least, on painkillers? Brett so, Favre went through this. Brett Favre went through this. I think it's I one of those teammate. unspoken thing. things that, w that in the sports world goes without being said. And now people you know, may say, wow, Tiger might be struggling with this. I'd be surprised if he wasn't because of the amount of surgeries that he's had. You remember three days before he was arrested, he was, I think he tweeted or released a statement that he never felt better. He, he was pain-free. And we all just assumed, all right, this surgery worked. His back's better. <laughs> but who knows? Now you got to look at that and, and think about, again, his personality. And you, when you brought up the teammates, I, I think about the personality of a guy who's playing the sport and is driven and is focused and, and could dial in the way he was able to dial in. And if the body's not allowing him because of the back to dial in, ha has he put that focus into something else? Has he gotten himself, you know, has that, he has that addictive personality. So it does make you wonder about that. But I don't think, I, I still think he's gonna get back on the court. I, I worry about people that have so much success at an early age and they only know success. And then when they, first time they stumble, are they like, and again, some people won't get this example, but it's the most accurate one I can give. Ray Lewis, the linebacker, came from so much struggle as a kid that when he fell on his face in a major way and was involved in a murder trial, he had the kind of personality that could shake it off and come back and be a great player. That's why Tiger Woods, I just don't think, was built for adversity and being able to handle people snickering at him behind his back. He built a wall around him, a protective hedge, if you will, around him. But I think Tiger has a great gift 
to be able to compartmentalize his life because he was doing things that nobody understood, and that was over here. And then, and then he was playing golf, and that was over here, and then something else was sitting over there. And when he's over here, he doesn't see any of that. And that's the Tiger Woods I know. And if he can compartmentalize, I think he can fall on his face. I'll tell you one thing Tiger realizes, that as much as the world loved him, the world now is t trying to take him down. And so he's got to rise above that. He needs better people around him, in my opinion, people that will intervene if he has a problem.